Here we go. We're lifting. We gotta keep going. <sighs> it's 100 degrees again in the attic. What happened? A fly flew into my eye. I'm pretty sure it's over here in the corner. Mom, maybe stop watching. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be installing the Mr. Cool Central Ducted Air Conditioning System with Hyperheat up in the attic to cool off our house. I think we have everything we need to get started, so let's do this. The first step to this install we've decided is to get the indoor unit up into the attic, and I really hope we don't drop it. Here we go, up the treacherous railingless stairs. We made it up the stairs! We're trying to decide what to do. We're gonna do it the safer way. Ow, I just hit myself in the face. Soft shackle. How many of you have been around long enough to know our history with pulleys? I just wanna say huge props to Courtney for helping me out with this. Like, it is not fun to go climbing around up in the attic. So thanks, Courtney. Here we go, we're lifting. Oh wow, this is actually really easy. I'm glad we're doing it this way, just saying. Now I'm completely holding it. Okay. Now the weight's gonna to transfer to you. We're good, we're good. Woo! Good work, Courtney. That, it that only just barely was able to make that corner. To add insult to injury to this 120 degree attic, I could only find my winter work gloves, so they are insulated. What? Nice technique. Oh, it's cool up here tonight. Okay. Okay. Look at me, it looks so graceful. I'm very excited about this central AC and heat pump that we're installing. So last summer when I was pregnant and feeling not good, Riley installed a Mr. Cool mini split just in our bedroom. It was very simple, very easy to install. That has kept the apartment pretty comfortable, but I think that this is gonna be a better solution for whole house. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing how this turns out. I can't. Okay, I can go like this. Ready? <laughs> how is that easier? All right, these are little plastic riser deals that are meant to lift this unit up so that it clears the pan. It also gives us the slope that we need for our drain line for the condensate. And it's got little stickers on it so that these will adhesive into the drain pan and not slide around. And then this will stick to it and not slide around. Pretty slick system. Up. Yeah. Okay, so with the air handler in place, it's time to move on to the intake venting. And that is going to be going right over here. That spot is in a central location inside of our house that'll allow air to be drawn from both ends of the house and really help with airflow through our entire home. The research that I've done has indicated that restricted return air ducting is one of the most common mistakes in air conditioning leading to an efficiency loss. So my hope is that by having a nice short, big return air duct right here, we're gonna have a lot of airflow through this unit and therefore keep the unit as efficient as we can. Okay, Riley's upstairs. He's gonna do the intake hole first and then I'm gonna stand down here with a garbage bag and hopefully contain the mess. And hopefully we don't wake the baby up because he's sleeping right over there. Hey, look at that. We're in the right place. It's even like pretty centered in there, huh? Pretty neat that these products have a 10 year parts and labor warranty. 
I don't know, Courtney. This is a weird caulking gun. What? Why are you pumping it? And then what is, look at, what is, why is there a globe? I'm trying, it's not a globe, it's this drippy. Ah, that is much better. Wow. Ooh. Bam. That totally worked. I'm learning so much today. <sighs> oh, I just made a huge mess down in the bathroom. Now we need to build a plenum that attaches to the back of the unit here so that we can run a piece of duct from here to there. This is a plenum kit made out of duct board, which in my research seemed like it was gonna be a little more DIY friendly than trying to make one out of sheet metal. Oh. <laughs> Courtney, you're practicing your best origami now. It's like arts and crafts. Building the box, so I want it to be like this. One side of the box is taped. Not only do I think that this duct board has been easier to work with, it's also I think the only way because there's no way we would have built a sheet metal box downstairs and then somehow gotten it up through our small opening. So overall pretty happy with the decision to go with this duct board to make our plenums. All right, we've got the outlet side plenum complete. We've got a 12 inch here and an eight inch on that side. So this eight inch is gonna run down to our bedroom over there. The 12 inch is gonna continue on down here behind me and eventually end up in the living room. And that means that it's time to move on to our air outlet registers that are gonna be in the living room and the bedroom. I found these super cool registers that have built-in adjustable lip hangers as well as a gasket around them. I think this is gonna make this install go a lot faster. Hello, goodbye. All right, well, that was pretty painless. One down, two to go. Since we do live in a pretty small space, we're only gonna have three air registers and they have to be pretty large to account for the CFM requirements of this unit. This is gonna give us a ton of airflow and keep the air moving all the way through the whole home. It's 100 degrees again in the attic. The heat is making it not very motivating to want to film because I just want to get this done so we can get out of here. But here we go. This is the last piece. I don't know what I'm saying. Cut, cut, cut through the fiberglass, cut around the ducting. The first video I watched where they use these huge zip ties, I thought that's clever, but there's no way that's right. Turns out I'm pretty sure that's right. That's how this stuff's supposed to be installed. That is the last of the duct work and I am so happy that it is done. I think this is probably the biggest part of the install for us. This product is actually intended to be able to be used in retrofit applications. So if your house already has all of this duct work but your air conditioner goes out, the install of this thing would be a lot easier. Like a lot easier. Like a lot easier. There's a good chance you could even use all the existing electrical yeah. and just hook it right up. I think back to our first flip house, the air conditioner was bad and we got a quote. They wanted to replace the entire system. Had we known about this product then, it would have been such a simpler, more inexpensive solution that we could have done ourselves. We're going to get the electrical all set up and then we'll check back in with you guys. And if you don't already know by now, Courtney and I are fully off grid here in North Idaho, which means that we make all of the power that we consume on this property right here on this property. This 4,000 watts of solar combines with the 10,500 watts that we have over there to give us more than 14,000 watts of solar. The Mr. Cool Hyperheat system is rated for negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. And unlike a resistance heater, it uses a heat pump to generate heat, which makes it a lot more efficient at generating heat. Perfect for off grid applications. Additionally, the compressor on the system is an inverter style compressor, which means that it's able to vary its DC voltage to ramp the compressor up or down depending on the load demands on the system. So rather than it kicking on and off like you might be used to hearing an outside air conditioner do, it's ramping it up and down and varying the compressor's output based on the demand on it, which makes it, again, a lot more efficient for off-grid applications like this.
making these videos isn't always easy, especially with Oliver here. Like, so Courtney's editing right now while I'm working, trying to be quiet. Welcome back. It is our third day on this install and we're really hoping that it's the last day of the install. We are ready. We've had our coffee and we have our appropriate footwear on. <laughs> You're in slippers and I'm in flip flops and socks. And here we go back in the attic. Today we found a wasp's nest outside where we need to work. And then we found a very old dead mouse in the mouse trap up here. <laughs> what are we going to find next? And I broke the pilot drill bit. Oh, man. Classic Riley move. There we go. We're through. So just like in the mini splits, Mr. Cool also offers the DIY line set for the central system, which means yet again, we don't need any specialty HVAC tools. This line set comes pre-charged with refrigerant, so no evacuation of the system is needed. I also saw in the product information that DIY installs are covered under warranty as long as you use this DIY line set. So the way this works is there's this clever little valve inside here. And when I connect this line set, that guy, and that guy push in on each other and make the connection there. So there's some O-rings in there and this thing will not leak until it's connected. What happened? <laughs> A fly flew into my eye. I'm pretty sure it's over here in the corner. Can you see it? Yeah. Maybe with a Q-tip? Yeah, try Q-tip. Oh my gosh. Why does this stuff always happen to Riley? I literally walked outside to grab some electrical okay. stuff and... Got it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's better. Just like our other Mr. Cool outdoor units, we're gonna mount it on the back of the building where it's kind of out of the elements and protected from dust. Baby is on his last nap of the day, which means we have one hour to get this installed. I asked Riley if he wanted to strap it down and then he was like, can you just stand on the pallet and hold it? And it seemed like an okay idea at the time, but I'm starting to question that. Way up there on the wall, because that's where the 25 foot line set reaches. I ordered a 25 foot one, that's as far as it gets us, and we wanna get this done today, so that's where it's going. At least it'll be really out of the way, especially of any swinging excavators. Yeah, don't ask about that. Yeah, well, I don't wanna talk about it. All right, here we go. Drilling a hole, no looking back. I really liked the way that the brackets on our other mini split turned out, and so I basically just made the same thing, and I didn't film that part, so here they are. I am standing here, and I'm looking at that bracket, and it just dawned on me that that means we have to put the unit up that high. That's really high. Yeah, I know. Fortunately, the skid steer does not reach high enough. We needed some way to lift higher, and so Riley's idea was to put it on one of our IBC totes. I don't think this is going to be that bad, huh? All I have to do is shimmy it over and get it up on here. I am tempted to not film the next part based on what Riley said he's going to do because I think you guys are going to be as stressed out by it as I am. Mom, maybe stop watching. Riley could see. Hey, maybe kind of a silly idea, but it totally worked. 
silly or dangerous? Just like on the air handler up in the attic, now all we have to do is install the DIY line adapters that are gonna let us use the Mr. Cool DIY line set to the condenser. We're getting really close to firing this thing up for the first time. With the line set hooked up, it's now time for the most exciting step, which is to release the refrigerant out of the condenser. All right, here we go. You guys hear it? Refrigeration line's done. Hello. So the next piece to the puzzle and one of the final steps to this installation is the condensate drain. This trap assembly here fills up with water to prevent air from being able to get sucked from the outside world into the air handler. This vent here is an anti-siphon that makes it so that the water that's exiting out the building can't suck this trap dry. I located this vent over our drain pan so that in the unlikely event that somehow water ever came out the top of this thing, it would just land in the drain pan. And then right here, I don't know if you can tell, but this drain is slightly higher than this drain. So if this drain ever gets clogged, the water just comes out of here and it lands into our secondary drain pan. This secondary drain pan also has its own drain line that's running outside. So we have two condensate drains, a primary and a secondary that both run to the outside of the building. When faced with overwhelming and new projects like this one, Courtney and I try to break things down into much smaller projects. And so in this situation, we broke it down into just sort of the major trades of having to run the ducting, having to do the electrical, the plumbing, the installation of the line set, the installation of the outdoor unit. We made each one of those sort of a much smaller separate project and worked through them all before we got started to make sure that we understood what we were doing. That combined with the great instructions meant that we were able to get this entire project done in just two days. I said, what am I doing wrong? Did I put it on upside down? Dang it. I keep running through everything in my head over and over and over again, trying to make sure that we're actually ready to test it. We still have a lot of loose ends to go, but I think it's time to see if this thing will make cold air. And hot air? And hot air. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Oh, the thermostat is on. Do you know how to use this thing? I'm kind of nervous. Courtney, it's blowing air. Like like a lot of air. Can you see my hair? So much air. That is, that's like kind of a lot. <laughs> like okay. a little bit too much. That's, that's a lot of air. Yet again, I don't know why we're so surprised that this all just works, but our Mr. Cool products actually work and we are cooling our house. Oh my gosh, that is so cold. This makes all of the hard work totally worth it. The second we hit that button and it fired up, I didn't regret going in the attic anymore. <laughs> All right, good morning. It is the next morning now since our first test. This thing's been running all night long, keeping us cool, and we're about to test the power consumption. The unit running at sort of a, a low rate because the house is already cooled off, we're drawing 2,000 watts. To cool our entire house. Which is pretty impressive considering just the solar array behind us is 4,000 watts. I'm really excited to see how this system can keep up with us this summer and especially this winter, and I'm looking forward to reporting back on that. We would like to give a huge thanks to Mr. Cool for sponsoring this video and making this install possible. If you'd like to learn more about this Mr. Cool product and all the other awesome products they have, check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time. Where'd Riley go?